Thanks, Jasmine. Bill, it's so good to see you in person after a year and a half. How are you? Richa, I'm all things considered just fine, and it's nice to be with you. Also, how are you doing? We're, we're doing well, and over the last you know year and a half since we've seen each other in person, so much has changed in education, so I'm excited to be able to talk through that with you today. We just saw James Wiley from Edge Adventures, and he talked a lot about personalization in education. And I know that's something that you are always excited to talk about and have spent a lot of time on. Can you share your perspective on personalization in education today? Yeah, absolutely, I'm, I'm happy to. Education as an industry has been going through a digital transformation for decades. But this last year marked a real turning point brought on by the accelerated technology adoption we all experienced during the pandemic. And at Blackboard, we don't think we're going back to the way things were pre-COVID. And at the same time, we believe that students will demand and expect an experience in education that's analogous to what they experience in other aspects of their digital lives, a user experience that is dynamic and personalized. And for a variety of reasons, we think that meeting those expectations is not only possible, but will also result in enhanced outcomes for students, educators, and administrators. Absolutely agree, Bill. Can you give us a few other examples outside of education where personalization has unfolded? Well, I think we could, we could all talk about a number of different industries, and I think retail is a good example. Like many of us, I grew up with the traditional shopping experience. I visited brick and mortar stores near my house during business hours and selected from in-stock products. And as home internet connections became more common in the 90s and early 2000s, the digitization of the shopping experience began to grow and evolve. And as a critical mass of people started to shop online, data aggregation began leading to the ability to create personalized retail experiences. And by personalized, I mean proactive nudges just for me from the companies where I shop, Think about Instacart putting items in my cart based on my past shopping habits. And now they even send me a push notification on my Apple Watch reminding me to buy something before I run out. And we've seen similar personalized experiences unfold and evolve over time in other industries like entertainment and healthcare as well. Why do you think the timing for personalization is in education is right right now? Well, looking at the journey we've been on as an education community, we have come a very long way from the traditional experience. Education has been digitizing for some time. We've seen an ongoing and massive deployment of online courses over the last two decades. And while the use of digital tools to support education has been growing, you might ask, why hasn't education made the shift to personalized experiences that took hold in other parts of society? Well, if we go back to those other industries, we have seen a common progression of digitization, data aggregation, application of technology to garner insights, and then the elevation of those insights into the user experiences. And in those other industries, personalization began once a critical mass of users engage consistently in a digital platform, and then data associated with that engagement was aggregated so that insights could be derived. Well, with the rapid shift to remote instruction in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have now seen in education a critical mass of users engaging in a digital platform. Almost overnight, education experienced a move from fractional participation in a digital environment to essentially all users in the global education community engaging in a digital platform. This growth in usage creates the potential and the opportunity to now harness the data to deliver personalized experiences. Can you share the volume of utilization of digital engagement in education right now? Yeah, digital engagement exploded this past year as a result of the global pandemic. And here are just a few stats from 2020 to give you a sense of that growth. Use of Learn SaaS grew by 400%. Use of our virtual classroom solution, Blackboard Collaborate, grew by 4,800%. And Blackboard Ally, our accessibility tool, 
increased the number of files that were altered to make them more accessible by over 200%. Now, importantly, over the last year, this massive digital engagement driven by COVID enabled continuity of education. But looking ahead, it has opened the door for education to move forward on a journey toward more personalized experiences. So Bill, as you use those examples, what would personalization look like in education from your perspective? Richard, just as no one could predict precisely how personalization would unfold in the other industries, I certainly can't predict exactly how personalization in education will take form over the next decade. We know it will look different to what we've seen in other industries, driven by the unique needs of learners, educators, and administrators. And we have seen a common progression, as I mentioned, of digitization, data aggregation, and elevation of insights into the user experience. And at Blackboard, we've been focused on laying the technical foundation to enable this progression in education. Bill, can you talk us through how Blackboard has been preparing for this? Sure, I'm happy to. We've moved all of our products to the cloud. We've developed a common platform architecture to create a common look and feel across our products. We've deployed a data platform to aggregate and secure data from across a variety of digital tools. And we've developed a mobile presence to engage with users wherever they are. With that progress behind us, the foundation of our approach to personalization is data, and more specifically, our data platform that aggregates and secures data. We use this data to fuel innovation and inform capabilities that we're bringing to market. And most importantly, we harness insights from that data and bring them back into the user experience. So Bill, can you tell us more why other companies can't do the same thing Blackboard can? Well, Richa, unlike our competitors, we provide a broad set of capabilities built on a technical foundation and underpinned by a data platform that aggregates and secures data from across our connected capabilities. And we can uniquely elevate data-informed insights back into the user experience anywhere across our platform to drive the greatest impact. And let me give you an example. Within Blackboard Collaborate, our virtual classroom solution, we recently introduced Gallery View, which allows instructors and students to see up to 25 people on the screen at a single time. But our vision for Collaborate goes much further than just showing more faces on screens. Ultimately, we want to elevate insights from our data platform into the user experience to enable better outcomes. In the future, we'll be able to overlay teaching and learning data from our LMS and other products into the gallery view for instructors, better informing them of the students that they are interacting with to enable a richer experience. And we all know that a richer engagement between instructors and students enables better outcomes. And that's the bottom line here. Personalization is about driving better outcomes for students. Bill, privacy is always a concern when we talk about data in these contexts. Can you share more about Blackboard's approach? Yeah, privacy is very important to us and our clients. Our clients own their data and entrust it to us, and we take this responsibility very seriously. We were among the first to adopt the high EU data privacy standards globally to safeguard our clients' data, and we continuously enhance our privacy and security programs. The important thing to understand in this whole context is that we're using our clients' data for our clients and their students' benefit with their knowledge and consent and not to sell advertising like a Google or Facebook. We have a dedicated privacy program led by our global privacy officer that's regularly reviewed by our compliance committee and we make our privacy policies public to our clients. Blackboard has been known for such a long time as an LMS provider, but it's clear Blackboard's doing so much work outside the classroom, including student success. Can you tell us more about that strategy? Sure. Well, our Learn LMS is an important element of the Blackboard learning experience ecosystem. It alone is not enough. Our clients' challenges are complex. And at the same time, students are demanding more. Our strategy to meet their needs is based on our EdTech platform where our learning management system, virtual classroom tool, communication tools, 
and accessibility solutions are seamlessly interconnected with integrated workflows and a consistent look and feel. But most importantly, as I mentioned already, our platform also aggregates and secures data from across our client's digital ecosystem, providing the foundation from which we can garner insights and then determine where in the user experience we can elevate those insights to maximize impact. And that might be within the LMS or it might mean elevating insights in a virtual classroom. We want to meet students with a personalized experience wherever it has the potential to help them achieve their goals. And that requires a strategy that goes beyond any single capability like an LMS. Do you feel the importance of the LMS is diminishing? Well, two years ago at BB World, I talked about how the LMS is necessary but not sufficient to meet the needs of our clients. And now more than ever, that is true. Over the past year, we saw exploding demand for Collaborate as schools and institutions were forced to quickly pivot to full online instruction. A recent study by Deloitte and Strata Education Network suggested that we're not going back to the way things were, and, and we agree. In fact, they said that the most innovative higher ed institutions will adopt a hybrid learning model going forward, which blends an on-campus and digital learning model. That hybrid model will require more than an LMS. And as I mentioned already, we believe that students will increasingly demand a personalized experience across their learning experience. And this will require data to be surfaced across the learning environment. So again, the LMS is a necessary and important part of the learning ecosystem, but it alone is not going to meet the needs of students, instructors, and administrators. Why is data such a critical component to drive enrollment, retention, progression, and graduation? Well, as, as we all know, every student is unique. They have different backgrounds, learning styles, and goals. So we look to gain insight from our data platform that can be harnessed to personalize every user's experience throughout the life cycle spanning enrollment, retention, progression, and graduation. For example, Data helps us drive enrollment and retention by offering proactive coaching to learners. We use data-driven alerts to identify the learners who could benefit from personalized outreach before classes begin and throughout the learner's journey. We support progression and graduation by tapping into insights that help learners stay on track. And we can provide nudges that encourage a learner to sign up for a tutoring session uh, when their assessment scores start to slip. And we can send push notifications rewarding great attendance records. Again, these examples illustrate the different opportunities to improve the experience throughout the student life cycle using data to drive impact. And that is the goal behind our vision to deliver a dynamic, personalized user experience fueled by data to advance learning. So Bill, at next year's Baby World, what will we be talking about? I'm actually really excited to think about where we'll be a year from now and to start to see some of the benefits that learners, faculty, and administrators will be seeing as personalized experiences in, in education continue to unfold. For example, I mentioned earlier how today we're working on a feature that will give instructors teaching inside Collaborate insight into teaching and learning data from Learn so that they can personalize their instruction to meet their class's unique needs. This time next year, I think we'll be hearing from instructors about how this has helped them improve student engagement. Bill, any final thoughts for our audience today? I just would like to share how optimistic I am for the future of education. We live through a very trying time, and now we're turning the corner and are able to focus on the future. As we look ahead, I hope the unique value that our partnership provides is clear. Through our platform that includes Learn, Collaborate, our accessibility tool, Ally, and other communication tools, along with our student success solutions, we are paving the way for delivering increasingly personalized experiences that no one else in the market can deliver. As a company, we are focused on and committed to advancing learning with our clients to make a real impact in education. And that's really exciting for us. 
Well, Bill, thank you so much for making time and sharing your insights. Now, Jasmine, back to you.